You know, I find a lot of younger people drinking a lot and getting really wasted. And so that in itself is the topic that we talk about in therapy. Before you can communicate about your STD, you have to be able to take care of yourself. And one of the ways you take care of yourself is by limiting the amount of alcohol you, you take in because, you know, if you're inebriated, if you're drunk, you're not taking care of yourself, you could be taken advantage of, you could get hurt, you could get into a car accident, you know, all the things that we know about. So one of the things to, to really discuss in therapy is how much are you drinking? And do you get to a point where you lose control? And can we talk about managing that? Can you moderate how much you drink to, so the point, to the point where you can actually make a, dis, a, a decision, a choice? Let's talk about why people drink. Uh, people are drinking for a variety of reasons. I have people who come into my office who, uh, when we start to actually discuss drinking, uh, many of them, uh, young, single, professionals are drinking because they are very anxious when they go out to meet someone. Uh, whether it's uh, socially anxious, whether they're anxious about because they have an STD and they don't know, they don't have the language to discuss it. Um, so they're already uh, anxious or maybe they're dealing with a depression and many, many people uh, have either a bipolar disorder where they're manic depressive or they are dealing with depression that has gone undiagnosed and people are self-medicating. And the problem with that is that, you know, the symptoms do get worse. And, uh, you know, so that's really something you have to deal with um, right off the bat in therapy. Because if you continue to do that kind of uh, behavior that really is... Uh, you know, destructive and, you know, painful to yourself, you can't even get to the point where you can discuss um, sexuality with somebody.